All right, Javier from Flat of Fever here, talking about uh, the new cars uh, again, and now uh, moving to the Ferrari, um, Ferrari SF70H. Uh, that's uh, that's what they've chosen to name it, and giving it this horrible looking logo, but we'll gloss gloss over that. Um, but yeah, this car. I mean, I'm just gonna warn you guys right away. I'm I am a I am a bit of a Ferrari fan, so. This might uh, might come across as a bit biased, but I do like this car. I I I, I think it's great lo looking right away, stunning. Even that T wing, I wasn't a big fan of it uh, um, at first. I, I didn't even know how to feel about it actually. Uh, but uh, at the end of the, uh, of putting this presentation together, uh, the more I look at it, the more I love it. Honestly, this is look at that look at that great car there with uh, uh, Kimi there uh, throwing some sparks at Fiorano. Um, but no, this it, this car um, it, and it and it represents to a departure um, from their from kind of like a previous philosophy in design. Like you'll see um, that it, pretty much just about everything in this car is completely different um, from last year, uh, which is uh, it's kind of encouraging uh, as a Ferrari fan. <laughs> like I said, uh, so let's get to it. Um, right away, you can see kind of like with the Mercedes that, uh, in terms of their nose cone uh, and front wing, it's still kind of similar to last year. I uh, haven't done much with it uh, there, um, but w when it comes to the front wing again, like with the Mercedes, um, I don't think we're, I don't think this is gonna be uh, race spec, or if it's race spec, I'm, I think that throughout the year we're just gonna see huge variation. Uh, in their front wing configuration. Um, in terms of the similarities, though, that's sort of where it ends, because and, and it truly does with this uh, with this car. And it, one of the first features that jumps right out of you at you is this crazy thing that they've done now with uh, with the side pods and uh, and the barge boards and all that crazy and all and all the craziness. And uh, we'll get to look into it a bit more detail here, but. Um, just to just to stick to here, we talked about the Mercedes last time, and, and this is what uh, uh, Scarves pointed out um, that they chose to bring their suspension way up, and their, their the Mercedes suspension was way up here uh, for uh, for aero benefit. And I think Ferrari have kept it deliberately where it is, and as you can see, um, when you look at it head on, like in this picture, all these aero. Uh, elements, which are, which are there, I mean, they're, they're suspension elements, but they're also little winglets. They're conducting air straight through, and that is going to be worked by the side pod. And look at look at how it's not touching any of the air intake. This this air that fits through this box here, in between the suspension elements. Psh, look at that. That's that's really clever. So that's it's made so that this air that's coming head on like that is going to get worked by uh the coke bottle shape of the car uh, under the side pod and the side pod is getting air from um uh just just uh, different air uh, from another from from the top of the car. So this is again so it's a very clever car uh once you look at it straight from the get go. Um they chose to keep these um uh, these brake um, scoops or whatever that uh, that we've seen. These are, this is a traditional again. So this is something that they've kept from the past. Um, whereas we saw teams like Mercedes, uh, they've moved to a, uh, towards more of an open uh, approach to to, to the brake cooling. Um, but this, I just chuck it to the fact that maybe they looked at it and they said, you know what, it's sort of not that much in the way. I mean. Whatever we could save in uh, uh, in aero, like maybe maybe they spent that time, they were able to focus those resources instead of focusing on this. They figured that uh, it would be more worth their time a different area of the car. Um, we won't know about that, but uh, that's what I think that happened with these. Uh, but um, who knows? They might switch to more of a, the the Mercedes approach later on in the year. Again, kind of like Mercedes, these really tall, really big review mirrors um, with holes that I think is cameras or some sort of sen uh, thermal sensor pointing straight at the wings so they can have more of that uh, live telemetry uh, with, with regards to um, 
uh, to, to tire temperature and be able to, uh, to monitor uh, these tires more closely that way. Another thing that jumps at you uh, is what's going on with these barge, uh, barge boards are huge. They're, they're, they're a lot bigger. Anyway, it, it, just another thing that jumps right out at you, and we'll get to those uh, later when we talk about the side views, uh, the side view of the car. Um, but again, um, looking at this um, side pod arrangement in more detail, um, you can kind of see like kind of what they've done. So what, they, what they've allowed themselves to do, and this is uh, just... Um, uh, the suggestion that I found somewhere uh, on the internet might be complete speculation, but what they've allowed themselves to do is um, give them the opportunity to effectively move the whole side pod a bit further back, um, but still this have have this part here because it's sort of glued and attached to the sideboard count as the leading edge, so it satisfies the regulation. But Ferrari didn't want a huge. Um, super stepped up forward the side uh, side pod, so they've they've moved it back, and instead use allowed themselves to use all of this area that um, the by regulation they could use for the side pod to create aero elements. And look at how beautiful that is, and and again, it's not um, one thing that's different between this car and 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 the um, Mercedes, and we're going to see throughout this analysis that Ferrari has have opted for more of a uh, more, more of a curvy looking design if, if, if you want to put it that way anyway as opposed to what Mercedes have done that Mercedes chose more of like that stealth look with the jagged lines and lots of uh, cuts and cascading things um, whereas the Ferrari they've it, it's all about these these nice very pleasing looking curves uh, that, uh, that in my opinion at least it makes uh, this car look quite Quite nice, quite uh, quite quite sexy, very very cool. Um, again, it, it, if you look at it from head up from head on, um, it lo it does appear that the uh, side pod itself is actually this big thing, but from the side, sort of on an angle, uh, you see that there's actually like quite a bit of room. That's again just working the air. Lots of room for uh, for Ferrari to use these elements and conduct the air around the side pod under the side pod uh, and all of that another element that you're going to see like uh, in just in general uh, F1 2017 is teams focusing on directing uh, a lot of the air also uh, to the underside of the car because that wider floor is going to allow them for uh, to use it <clears throat> and to use the rake um, to get more of an aero benefit uh, for not a lot of uh, not a lot of drag, so this is, is very efficient. It's going to become uh, very efficient to be able uh, if you can manage to uh, to really funnel some air to the underside of the car, and and, and that's what a lot of teams are doing. And they're they're using the, uh, things like these S ducts uh, to kind of um, play around with the aerodynamics that way. That's eventually gonna. Uh, have some repercussions with the under uh, with the underside of the car, um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's what that is here. This cut here is the uh, sort of where the air goes in uh, for the S duct and the exit to the S duct. We're gonna see it's like just over there, sort of what Mercedes was doing last year. But again, instead of having like uh, like an ugly looking uh, hole poked in, they decided for more of this more fluid shapes all throughout the Ferrari this year. I, I don't know why, but I really like it. Um, uh, this here is sort of kind of continuation of the uh, of the barge board there. Um, nice piece of carbon fiber, lots of curves there again, but you can't really see it um, sort of hidden behind the uh, the wheel. And, and in this view, you can't really get a good look at it until you come at it from like a bird's eye view sort of, sort of angle. But again, uh, all these little details uh, you can see from the front um, Let's talk about the side because we said that this car is running a lot of rake and and they're not uh, like Mercedes. They're not trying to hide uh, how much how much how much rake. We knew that going into the season because of the uh, new aero regulations, everybody was going to try to sort of copy what Red Bull had been doing before, which was sort of designing the car um, to be mostly like to, to be very to, to run a really high rake because uh, that gives you if you do it properly that gives that can give you uh, a lot of downforce for. Uh, not a lot of drag. 
Uh, we see here that they put a little cap on the uh, on the blown uh, that that uh, um, whatever you know that the the blown uh, axle um, that that they had like going on last year, but they removed it here. So clearly that's not gone. It's not that they've they've chosen not to use that blown axle anymore. They're still using it, obviously. Um, <clears throat> that's just for the uh, for the media picture, pictures. Uh, uh, but then again, shark fin. Oh, beautiful. You can see right away. I mean, not so much in this picture. It doesn't just it doesn't jump out at you so much when you see it like this. But look at it in comparison to um, to when Vettel's in the car, and you can see how big his helmet is and how huge this this arrangement with the barge board here is. Uh, it's pretty crazy now um, if you saw the Mercedes video I was talking about how they've also trying to do like some complicated stuff uh, with the barge board some some uh, some real good work and real real aggressive really uh, um, work that, that Mercedes have been doing but obviously they they did that whole like jagged line thing that you could see here really beautiful but in its own way um, but now we, we see the different approach again same same situation they're trying to extract uh, the, the the highest aero benefit from uh, from a creative shape uh, let's say uh, in the barge board that's gonna channel the air more effectively to run down here to be later used by the by the rear of the car in the coke bottle shape um, and you can do that the way the Mercedes did it with using lots of uh, cuts and 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 jagged lines and whatever or you can do it this way you can do it very very I, I just really like that that nice flowing shape this nice flowing shape right here um, pay attention to this bump um, this black carbon fiber bump that's going on here uh, that's gonna become uh, more apparent what that does uh, when we see it uh, from the top angle um, but yeah, then then they've done this uh, whole thing here. This whole side of the car, this whole area of the car, they put a lot of work here. Lots of little wings. This, this little wing sticking out. Um, there's a couple of uh, you can't see it very much here, but in the top top view you, you'll see it better. But there's an, there's a wing right here, and then there's another little wing right there. That's a third wing. Uh, oh, you can see it a little better there. Um, how it just this is from a Reddit user, by the way, how it just helps. The whole thing is about helping the air to flow into these shapes and to be, to be able to be used then by later by the, by the rest of the car more efficiently. So look at how that, this one works. It's just nice to see. So even though um, uh, there's the, that the, the, uh, the actual opening for the, uh, on the side pod is actually much further back, and here, look at how it's taking advantage of this hole to suck more air down. Uh, very great. And um, again, this is from another one of these uh, um, magazines. All, all these sources, by the way, they're they're in the notes and and in the description of the video. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you, you can you can just see how this ship just attempts to channel the air more efficiently to just under the side pod. Because that's going to become important for the rear of the car, which is very tightly packaged, kind of like the Mercedes. Um, this little T-wing, uh, if you can see from here, it's sort of slanted up like as a little spoiler. Uh, and somebody suggested, again, the speculation, uh, that it kind of tries to condition the air to sort of want to go up. So by the time that it reaches the um, the rear wing. It actually, it's 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 gonna be more efficiently, so because it's already headed in that direction, so to speak. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not an aerodynamicist, but if that makes any sense. Uh, uh, kind of does make sense to me, but I'm not sure if that's true. Um, a lot of people are saying that Ferrari showed up with a kind of basic rear wing, um, and there's every indication that this is not gonna be any kind of race spec uh, wing, just sort of for testing and and for this filming day, uh, but. Come the end of testing, come Australia, we're gonna see a more aggressive uh, approach to the design of the rear wing. Um, again, this the, this configuration here, like this um, this from motorsport.com, um, the guy took the time to actually highlight what is effectively a collection of aerodynamic elements here glued to the side pod 
And this area here, together with that uh, sort of extension of the barge board here, um, is it, it, what it's doing. It's it's giving Ferrari the ability to play around with uh, with it more because they're not the, the side pod is here, and that's the pretty much the only like well not not the only but that's the fixed part. Now this whole area here, they can do all kinds of creative things, and that's what they're saying that you know this little wing. Uh, might change uh, and then this this surface here might change the way um, the way it looks throughout the season or depending on the aerodynamic um, requirements of, of this or, or, or that track same with this um, which is great to see that at least uh, uh, Ferrari are, are taking the aerodynamics uh, pretty seriously it seems uh, uh, with this car um, again not hiding the rake uh, you can see the they chose to put the Alfa Romeo instead of the the the, uh, the 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 Alfa Romeo logo or crest there. They put the Quadrifoglio for good luck, I guess. Neat. Um, <clears throat> top view. Here we see what's going on. Uh, remember that bump from the side view there by the barge board? This is what it looks like from the top. Look at this crazy thing. This is insane. Look at that. Look at what again. Mercedes. Their approach was very like angular jagged lines um very very clever looking but this this just looks beautiful and it has it has a form like you can see you can see that it's uh it's still probably going to be uh giving them some huge arrow gains but it, it just looks so nice so yeah that's what that bump is so that bump is this first wing so they kind of split and made some sort of a wing here before it turns into the actual white part, because that, so that's the white part of the, uh, that's this white part here, and this this little wing is is this this wing here right here, that little section there. Very 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 neat detail, uh, and you can you can tell. And again, this section of the car, they spend quite a lot of time working on it, starting with this S dot right here. Cameras, ca the mounting. Um, remember how last year they they tried to do something clever, like the same thing that Mercedes was doing with the camera mounting uh, things, uh, pods. But this year they just chose to like do like more of a um, a traditional design. But after that, look, it's ducked right there. First wing, second wing, third wing, little side wings here coming out of the bodywork. Very clever stuff. Now, now this is gonna be channeling lo channeling lots of air around to be worked with what we see here again kind of like with mercedes really aggressive tight packaging uh with the coke bottle these side pods look at how tiny and swept back they managed to do it um you can see it you can see it better so this area here that's that area you can see it better in this picture how what they've essentially done is giving themselves this huge wing it essentially is what it turns into this huge wing to play around with whereas the actual side pod is coming all the way down back here really cool stuff really cool and look they're not even um their, their side pods are so tiny they're not even using the whole of the real estate available look that's 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 very badass uh, lots of room here you can see again kind of like with the mercedes They've managed to really leave a lot of room here visible from the from the floor, and again, that just goes to show you how hard they've worked at uh, uh, at this uh, coke bottle shape. Lots of air is going to be able to be channeled all the way down here to be worked by the rear of the car. Again, very, very, very uh, focused on making this area of the car as effective and efficient as possible. Um, talking about the shark fin. Here's sort of a, a diagram and illustration of what it's supposed to do for the airflow. This kind of this airflow that's coming here from the helmet and whatever else just straightens up, straightens uh, it up, and makes sure that it comes nice and neat uh, with a laminar flow to the to the rear wing. Again, really simple looking rear rear wing. Uh, people are saying that it's obviously not going to stay like this for much longer. Um, that, that they're gonna show up to races with something more complicated and more, more F1 2017 looking than just this plain wing. Um, uh, yeah, this, 
for the top. Um, here, usually, I would have put uh, a lot of pictures from the rear, but <laughs> Ferrari didn't let anybody take any detailed pictures of the rear of the car. These uh, pictures here are actually from a video that a fan took. I'll get uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but from here, you can see that, again uh, comparison between Mercedes, what Mercedes is doing, and what Ferrari is doing, and it, and it's it's that it's it's leaving a lot of room here to hide package the rear of the car as tight as po as you can as tight as you can to let lots of airflow to be worked by the rear of the car um, I also wanted to point out here with this uh, picture here so you can see what I mean by Mercedes approach of like just really cascading like like sharp jagged lines but like what they did here with these louvers many of them and that this Part. What Mercedes is doing here is exactly the same. They're trying to approach. Uh, they're trying to achieve the same thing. You do this um, because you're going to be counting on the on a, on a lot of rake and and a lot of diffuser at the back. So uh, these these little veins here, the louvers there, um, they're meant to sort of trap the air and keep the air uh, from escaping out that this way out that way, and instead move to be worked by the diffuser at the rear of the car so same problem being approached in two different ways and if you ask me this just looks so much nicer so much more beautiful uh again these jagged lines cascading ch -ch 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 cuts whereas ferrari has opted for more of a fluid way uh, uh to put it well, another thing that i forgot to like point out with the ferrari was this this delta wing that they have here hidden behind the um, the barge board, Mercedes doesn't have it. Very cool feature, but again, Mercedes approach di uh, different um, than Ferrari. This section here, sorry, this this arrow is not pointing in the right, in the right direction. This arrow uh, I, it should be po uh, pointing towards this uh, this section here, so you can see a flat um, from what from the angle. And this is something that somebody on Reddit pointed. They uh, th somebody posted this on one of those threads uh, that I linked below, saying like, "Hey, like the Ferrari rear suspension looks weird. It does look weird. Look at that. That's weird. That's that's not the traditional way. Like, look at how Mercedes does it. Uh, they've turned it into a wing, uh, essentially by like sort of fusing these two uh, these two parts of the wishbone." Um, and this is sort of what Ferrari have done too. They've turned theirs into a wing, but it's more dramatic than that because it sort of it comes up, and that's sort of like the. Um, it, it, but by moving the contact point way further out, you can see that it actually creates quite a lot of room here, and that's why I pointed it out here in this picture when uh, you have uh, I believe that's Kimi um, really working the suspension. Uh, when he's un turning under braking so that's that's what he's doing here and that's why you can see the two sides like this side sticking out more than that one um that's i thought that was pretty clever actually what ferrari did there just allowing them to have way more room here to be worked um by by those elements at the rear of the car just there's there's just way more of a uh of room there for the, for those little winglets there uh, to act on it but again looking at the back uh, they're not hiding the rake they're not like this, look at that this is huge that's for what they've been running before uh, we see some aggressive elements there with the uh with the diffuser but we know that these cars are gonna have there we know that they're all gonna have pretty big diffusers uh, that's sort of what we can tell again thanks to the user that uploaded this video on youtube because none of the ferrari videos show you the back uh um, but it, top view, or sorry, the, all the views now here comparing last year's car with this year's car. That's 2016, 2017, 2016, 2017, 2016, 2017. Right away, you see bye bye Mexican sponsorship <laughs> with Gutierrez gone. You know, good riddance. Bye bye to that. Ray Ban sponsorship bigger. Uh, the car is obviously way more red. Um, again, they got rid of that white stuff. Maybe it was bad luck. Maybe that's why they, instead of putting the Alfa Romeo logo and they put the the quadrifolio <laughs> give a bit more good luck but yeah completely different design philosophy you can see it's not just that the car is narrower or whatever uh just a completely different car like that's that's gone uh these, these things so a, a lot of this uh old mentality has been replaced um 
look, it's just a completely different approach. The the thing with the with the barge board really becomes evident here. Look, look how different that is. Almost no barge board going there. Huge. This this area of the car. That's what I'm saying. You can really tell how they spent a lot of effort making sure they got this right. And I think I think they did. I mean, just by the way, I mean, it looks very very stunning. If anything, uh, and and usually when something looks, isn't that a saying? Like when something looks nice, it, or when it when it's fast, it looks good. It's good if it's good, it's fast. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but this front view from from this mess that was going on here to this more just more tidy, more well thought out. Uh, right right away, it looks very different from the front view. Small. Uh, this was the uh, the airbox way smaller, so they they made it bigger. Um, and again, running, running the the rake that you didn't used to see before. And um, I mentioned before uh, this guy to put the, the video out. Um, and I just want to. It wouldn't be a, a talk about the Ferrari launch without actually bringing up these guys, the uh, the Tifosi, the 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 Italian Ferrari fans. And honestly, they're they're one of the best re <laughs> one of the reasons why. Uh, why I'm sort of a Ferrari fan. It's just Ferrari fans around the world. Like they're, they're just great. And these people, this is not a public event. Like right, there's no, there's no grandstands at Fiorano. Um, these people just came here. They brought their own food. They set up their own rig here. Their own grandstand scenario. This guy, look at this guy. He's been hauling this flag around since the early '80s. Like look, this picture here is uh, Gilles Villeneuve in what I believe is a 1982 Ferrari 126C. This guy's been look. He's been. He has this flag all ripped up and chewed up since the '80s. This is why. This is why. Uh, uh, why it's great. You you didn't see any of that, um, in at Silverstone. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, they just the, the Ferrari passion. 